Scotland is not a one-trick pony when it comes to its deer. Of course, red deer are the main event, offering magical stalking in some of the most breathtaking scenery in the world. But hot on its heels are seeker. Even with a heavy cull programme to help protect forestry, the non-native seeker are spreading and offering great stalking opportunities. This evening, Tim is being looked after by Lackey Smith of Highland Sporting. Now, one of the things people do talk about um, is the, the cross hybridisation of the, the red and the seeker. Um, you've got a view on that, you know. <laughs> you know. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't believe it is, it's as much a concern as some people believe. I think in some areas it might be. Mm -hmm. I think if there's, you know, if you've got two sparse populations, then then there might be more of an opportunity. I think if there's enough of their own species, I don't think it happens as much as people imagine. Okay. Now we look at the train here. You're, you're saying to us this is real kind of classic. Seeker well, country, in, in this in this part of, of Scotland, yeah, where there's a bit of you know low highlands, if you like, where mm -hmm. you've got the lower hills and, and you've got some some maybe birch trees and stuff like that, sort of natural stuff. They seem to do pretty well in this, and I quite like it. It's quite often as well, you know, they've probably populated these areas because there wasn't that many red in them anyway, and it's become you know it's become a, a place where they could thrive. I think it's just a wee bit of opportunism on their part. Yeah, yeah. We're in Invernessshire, close to Loch Ness, if you get a chance to see it, and looking for a seeker stag to add to the red he took in Sutherland. The ground is not as challenging as the West Highland coast, but cover is a problem. First, we spot from the road. Your eagle eyes are just picked up on a... Looks like we've got a one or two beasts over there. Yeah, that's right. Um, how far away are they, then? At the, at the moment. A long, long way, way away, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll actually, okay, we've done, done the important bit here, we've actually located where they are. And they seem fairly settled, so that's fine. Um, so we've got the wind in our face at the moment, haven't we? So Actually, can, can you believe that? It's, thr it's thrashing the, the, the head out. Is it? Like that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's looking not that heavy. Hey! Wasn't we are. <laughs> Where's your lid gone? <laughs> Surviving the drive-by, we have a couple of stags to chase. The wind isn't brilliant for us, and we now have a second stag to contend with. We try and get around onto them, but to no avail. As we let things settle down, Lackey tells Tim more about the Scottish seeker. So the seeker, Lackey, are a very, very different type of animal, the way they behave. They behave very and, different from the rays. Yeah. They're very differently indeed. They're much more solitary, you know, they, they live, you know, in singles and pairs and all the rest. And this sort of ground, you know, reds would tend to, if you disturb the they quickly go in one bunch yes. and move. Wouldn't guarantee that with Seeker, they might, but they were more likely to go their separate little ways. So they're all individuals as opposed yeah. to a pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, you, know, you will see them in herds at times, but you know they don't hold hinds the way that red stags do. I mean, yes, sometimes you'll see them with a group of hinds if you disturb them, run out together. But you know the stag will stay there if there's something in the season fine. If not, he just goes. And, and you know I would say that's probably why there's such a, a sort of high caffeine rate with Seeker, you know, it's, it's that, that sort of method of mating, you know, they're, they're, just, they're just moving around the whole time. Could well be doing this, this uh, clump of, of the scrub in front of us, yeah. and they're likely to feed out, and you know, the wind's still perfect for us, but I don't want to keep going higher here just now because we'll just run out of light. Okay. okay right. So we'll just take our time, we'll just cut back a little bit and come out on this next level. You can keep your Serengetis and your Santorinis. With a beautiful Scotch sunset to accompany us, Tim moves towards a group grazing just over the brow. There's a spiker in there, and Lackey warns they're going to graze towards us. He is spot on, and we get a good look at the lead hind before she wins us. Well, that's quite surprised is how small they are. I yeah. mean, they're, they're bigger than the road, yeah? Yeah, but, yes, but the thing is, they, because it's been in, in winter coat, they're, they're virtually black. Anything that's very dark always gives the impression of being large. 
if you see a stag when it's a hill stag which has been rolling about in, the, in a peat hag, he stands up and goes, oh look at that huge black one and he's not any bigger than the rest just because Looks he's very nice. definite you can see him you see how well that their, their coats are just now mm. blending in you've really got to look to see them mm. but, if he, but if he's if he's black he stands out like a sore thumb we thought we'd have a lion tomorrow morning, but um, no, not. <laughs> if you want. I'll so uh, <laughs> back. we'll see what happens weatherways. At the moment, it's, it's very mild. Uh, if it was a bit sharper in the morning, we might try another place. We'll just literally see what happens when we get up in the morning and then go from there. Okay, okay. brilliant. What a great evening! But there's a lovely Black Isle morning to wake up for too. This time, the animals are few and far between, and the seeker in the mist prove elusive. Tim's hope of a red and seeker stag double hasn't worked out as we'd hoped, but the Scottish experience, especially the mighty first stalk on the reds, has made its mark. I really enjoy my time in Scotland, other than the midges. The midges are an issue during the summer and in, in the autumn and when the wind's not blowing, and we've had very little wind over the last two or three days. But it has so much to offer. The highlands, just stunning, and you come down to the lowlands, down towards Loch Ness, and it offers you that challenge. We have the hunting, but also we have the outdoor challenge, the, the walking, the trekking. I think it's got everything. And I'm really looking forward to coming back in December on the Hines.